During your adventures in Mornstead, you'll frequently cross paths with a mysterious warrior known as the Iron Wayfarer. His presence is puzzling, and every interaction leaves a lingering sense of familiarity if you've played the previous Lords of the Fallen game. Could this dark warrior be connected to that game somehow? He carries the weight of numerous battles on his shoulders. He has distinctive tattoos that mark his face. His eyes hold a depth that suggests he has witnessed unthinkable horrors, many of which he played a direct role in. Though he presents a hardened exterior, beneath the layers of armor and built-up resentment lies a very complex history. This man once stood at the epicenter of a grand conflict where he found himself entangled in a battle that pitted humanity against the demonic Rogar, the forces of the tyrant god Adir. This historical backdrop is vital to unraveling the truth behind the Iron Wayfarer, also known as Harkin. A thousand years before the events of Lords of the Fallen, the most recent one, Harkin's name is synonymous with crime. At this time, Harkin was a convict awaiting his penance in a dungeon. However, a twist of fate sees this convict released from his chains by a mysterious figure named Kazlo. This liberation isn't merely an act of kindness though, it's a calculated move by Kazlo to recruit Harkin in the battle against the forces of the tyrant god Adir, who have invaded the Keystone Citadel, belonging to a noble named Antanas. You might remember Antanas if you've watched my video about Andreas. With this task in mind, Harkin plunges into a perilous quest facing the Rogar lords head on. As Harkin conquers each, his strength grows, or as you might know it, he levels up. Now the climax of his journey brings him to the God's Palm, where Adir awaits. The God's Palm is the literal hand of the God Adir, which you can see on the horizon in Lords of the Fallen. You actually get to go there in the first game. So as I was saying, Adir awaits the God's Palm. But instead of a direct confrontation, Adir engages Harkin in a different way. The God reveals unsettling truths about Antanas and his dark experiments. Indeed, Antanas has been manipulated the very fabric of humankind to try and elevate himself to a god. This exposes the chaos and imbalance that Antanas has caused in the world, leading to Adir trying to return to the mortal realm after being banished by the three judges 500 years prior. Adir offers Harkin a choice, symbolized by a potent rune. This rune has the power to end Antanas and halt his destructive path. By doing so, Adir would be able to reclaim Antanas' soul, solidifying his presence in the human realm. The choice isn't simple though. Either side with Adir and eliminate a known threat, or distrust the god's intention and protect Antanas, regardless of how many people he's killed for his godly plans. So Harkin stands at a crossroad here. His next decision is pivotal in shaping the course of history. Harkin creates a third option for himself, the choice of refusing to bend to the will of either power. Instead, he remains steadfast, determined to confront Antanas without the help of Adir. So, without using the rune that Adir has given him. As Harkin makes his way to confront Antanas about his dark experiments, an unsettling sight awaits him. Antanas, once recognized for his noble lineage, now stands as a grotesque manifestation of his ambitions. His quest for godhood has deformed him, twisting him into a monstrous entity. Without hesitation, a fierce confrontation ignites between the two. The battle is fierce, but Harkin's martial prowess leads to the downfall of Antanas. This man is just too angry to die. Harkin's decision sets forth a series of consequences. By refusing to side with either entity, he ensures that Adir remains dormant, stripped of his earlier might, while at the same time defeating the one man who was willing to throw away his humanity to become a god. This decision brings about a momentary balance, letting humanity savor a brief era of tranquility without the looming shadow of a god's rule. 
Yet, despite Harkin's valour at the Keystone Monastery, his heroics in quelling the Rogar invasion and his bold stance against Adir, gratitude is a rarity. Instead of honour, Harkin faces scorn. Those he protected now chase and vilify him, a bitter reminder that sometimes heroes bear the brunt of their choices. In the aftermath of the climactic events at Keystone Citadel, Harkin is branded not as the hero who stood up against two daunting powers, but as a traitor to his own kind. The Council of Antanas cleverly orchestrates a narrative that casts shadows over Harkin's true deeds. In their revision of history, Antanas emerges as a savior, the lone figure who halted Adir's return. Harkin is now portrayed as a mere criminal who took the life of the hero Antanas. But of course, the struggles of Harkin are not solely external. Internally, he grapples with a burden far greater than any misrepresentation of events. The Rune of Adir. The Rune's insidious nature gnaws at him, bending and warping his once indomitable spirit. Driven to the edge by the Rune's influence, Harkin's very nature shifts. He starts to embrace the very image the world thrust upon him, a beast who terrorizes humanity indiscriminately. During this tumultuous period, Harkin encounters the Umbral Lamp, which grants its holder the power to defy death, returning them to life repeatedly. Now we don't exactly know how he got the Umbral Lamp, but if you know something, make sure to share it with me in the comments. It's this enigmatic object that grants Harkin his unnaturally prolonged life, allowing him to exist for over a millennium. However, it's a gift steeped in a curse ensuring Harkin remains trapped in a cycle of life, death, and rebirth, forever haunted by his past actions and the ever-present corruption of the Ruin. At the heart of every hero's journey is a pivotal moment of self-realization, and for Harkin, it emerges from the depth of his greatest burden. As the weight of the Ruin of Adir's influence continues to mount, Harkin takes a drastic step. He decides to go to Mornstead, to find the one person he believes could deal with the power of the Ruin of Adir, Judge Cleric. Revered as a living saint, Judge Cleric is one of the three judges who originally defeated the tyrant god Adir about 1,500 years before the events of Lords of the Fallen. However, Harkin's intent to rid himself of the Ruin's malignant grip proves to be short-sighted. The very evil he wishes to escape manifests in a catastrophic manner. Judge Cleric and her hallowed sentinels, once paragons of virtue, descend into a frenzied, corrupted state of bloodlust. Now, this doesn't happen overnight, of course. Slowly but surely, over the course of years, their minds are twisted by the Ruin's seductive power. Mornstead becomes the stage for Adir's planned resurgence. When the time comes and when humanity crumbles to a fragile state, Adir unleashes his Rogar legions once again, plunging Mornstead into chaos. Now, understanding the extent of the calamity his decision brought to the world, Harkin is compelled to return to Mornstead once more. He embarks on a mission to reclaim the rune and stave off the impending doom. Throughout his journey, he crosses paths with you. Offering advice and cautioning against the treacherous allure of the umbral lamp you also bear, Harkin's meetings also serves as a moment of introspection, where he grapples with the consequences of his past actions and the true meaning of burden. Upon reaching Upper Kalrath, a poignant moment sees Harkin lamenting his misguided trust in higher powers. I've heard things in Bordstone about this. Centuries of madness and slaughter. Atrocity upon atrocity committed by man and rogue are alike. If all this really resulted from the presence of then... By the time he reaches the precipice overlooking the manse of the Hallowed Brothers, Harkin's resolve is fiery and unyielding, determined to reclaim what is rightfully his and rectify his past mistakes. He readies himself for the clash ahead. The rune of a deer is close. I can taste it, like blood in my mouth. They all want me to give in to despair, but that's for the weak. The rune is mine, always has been, and I'm going to take it back. Let the gods bestow their grace on anyone 
who tries to stop me, like these fools. There's no salvation here. No redemption. Not for anyone. Let Moonstead and every meaningless life in it burn. The pursuit of the Ruin of Adir culminates at the Abbey of the Lucian Sisters, a revered sanctuary where the Ruin is kept safe, under the protection of a powerful being. Here, in the heart of the Abbey, a treacherous ambush awaits. As you approach the Ruin, the rapturous Huntress of the Dusk descends from the shadows. Yet she isn't the only presence lurking. No, Harking emerges, drawing the Huntress' attention and joining forces in the battle. The combined strength of both of you proves too much for the Huntress, and with her defeat, the Iron Wayfarer, Harkin, seizes his moment, claiming the Ruin of a Deer. Unfortunately, the grip of the Ruin is insidious. Whether due to the vulnerabilities of age or the resurgence of suppressed fears, its corrupting influence rapidly overtakes the mind of Harkin once again. Consumed by its power, he becomes the very embodiment of his deepest dread, a creature driven by unquenchable anger. The ultimate confrontation takes place at the gates of Bramis Castle. Here, you and the now corrupted Harkin clash in a fiery battle, where the stakes are the fate of the Ruin and the very soul of Harkin. The fight is grueling, but eventually Harkin's resistance wanes, and he is defeated. With the Ruin reclaimed, it's a bittersweet victory, as one can't help but reflect on the tragic descent of a once resolute hero. But this is not our last conversation with Harkin, no. After his death at the gates of Bramis Castle, Harkin is sent once again to the Umbral Realm, where he stays and finds comfort in the snowy landscape of the Fief of the Chill Curse. High up on a snowy ledge, the Iron Wayfarer stands. You'll get no more fight from me. Couldn't stand the influence of the room like I could when I was younger. But my head's clear now. Clearer than ever. Gods. Men good and bad. People I've hated. I've loved. I've been told by all sorts at one time or another that I'm nothing but a killer. A monster. Turns out they were right. Every one of them. A man can try to deny what he is. And only for so long. Even if he's a mortal. Well, no more. The essence of Harkin's journey lies in his continuous struggle with identity and morality. Was he truly a hero battling his inner demons, or was the monster always lurking beneath? In this secluded spot, Harkin finally confronts and accepts his nature. He acknowledges the limits of his strength and the inescapability of his true self. As the Iron Wayfarer stares into the horizon, he finds himself trapped in an eternal contemplation of identity, morality, and the inexorable hand of fate. This is where we say our goodbyes to Harkin for now. Now, it's important to mention that this questline isn't the only questline involving Harkin. If you follow the umbral ending questline, you get a chance to actually kill Harkin for good and pick up his armor in the process. But that's the topic of another video, perhaps. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into the story of Harkin. If you haven't yet, go check out my other videos on the lore of Lords of the Fallen, such as a lore recap of Lords of the Fallen 2014, or even the full story behind Isaac, the Dark Crusader. Thanks again, and we'll see you very soon.